this section we're going to be looking at various aspects of printing and page setup. Well that we're talking about how do we prepare our document so it displays correctly on a printer or for that matter on an exported document such as a PDF. So it's about tidying up the workbook environment. Well the first thing we're going to look at in this section is print areas. Now print areas are something that are especially important within Excel. They're important because unlike most other Microsoft programs, you have a very, very large window of data. If you consider a standard Word document, all of the text that is within the document is normally visible on one page. You don't have text that is scrolling hundreds of miles to the right or to the left that you have to scroll around to find. With Excel, of course, we can have data over several thousands or even a million rows, and we can again have many thousand columns worth of data. This type of situation means that when we come to print, it can be somewhat difficult to condense all of that information onto just one printed page, or a sequence of printed pages. So we have to be very controlled, specific, about what areas should be printed and which areas should not be printed. So to understand the print area, the first thing I'm going to do is add the Print Preview button. To find the Print Preview button, we can use the file menu and find it that way, but my preference is to add it to the custom quick access toolbar. And you will see it is one of the presets here. I can find print preview and print. That is the one I'm interested in, and I already have it selected. It's this one here. What this print preview button will do is display the worksheet as it will display on a printer. It is giving you a preview as to what you can expect to see in the output document. So let's just try and see how this particular spreadsheet, which contains quite a lot of information, quite a lot of columns and quite a few rows, how that would actually be displayed on a printer. Well, the print preview environment, just a quick recap on this, it covers many features such as the selection of the printers and a whole variety of how we might want the outputted pages to be printed, collated in different ways with different orientations. But for now, what I'm interested in specifically is this preview area here. Now, at first glance, this doesn't look particularly bad. It sort of seems logical. Uh, we seem to have a header and then a load of data going down. But actually, if I think back to my spreadsheet, I know that I have a lot more columns than I have here. Excel has effectively truncated some of these columns and added them onto separate sheets. So as I move through sheet 1 of 15, I'm now moving down the rows. You can still see the date column is selected until eventually I get to the end of the block and then Excel will start to display the next block of data to the right. These are new columns. If you could imagine the previous lump of data we were looking at was in this section here and going down five pages. Now we are looking at the next five pages. So now we will see this total sales column with the sales number. And as I click through these previews, we can see that it's the same column headers, just moving through all of the different rows. And finally, once I get past row 10 or page 10, I now move on to the final block. And this is really awkward because now we only have two columns partially covering a sheet. And not only does it do it partially covering a sheet, it does it over multiple pages. This kind of page here is going to be particularly uninformative. We have a small amount of data and it's disconnected from all the other data. Needless to say, this is an unacceptable situation. We need to change the way this data is printed. Well, let's return to our normal Excel environment and see what we can do about that. Well, the first thing that's sensible to do before we look at any of the new features is use some of the features that we've already learned. So, for example, how about resizing the column widths? I see there's quite a lot of empty space in this list. Let's try and condense that information down. Highlighting the line between the columns, I'll double click. And now all of my data is condensed to the minimum level. Also, we see these things here 
little grey dotted lines. This is what's called page break lines. And this is Excel telling me where the dividers are going to be between the different sheets when they come out on the printer. So again, let's just quickly flip back to our print preview mode to see if these lines correspond. So in effect, I can see that my first block of columns runs to the GST field. If I move back, sure enough, that is the divider. And as I move down the page, I can also see vertical dividers telling me where the pages will be divided vertically. I'm not going to do it, but I could revisit the print preview button to confirm that. The other thing that's sensible to do when you're trying to print your workbook effectively is to zoom out a little bit and get an overview of the worksheet. As covered before, an easy way to zoom in and out is to hold the control key and roll your mouse wheel. Let's just go way out and see what's going on with our spreadsheet. So even though I can't read any of the data within my Excel sheet, I can still get an overview. I can definitely see that it's maybe, okay, five sheets long, and at the moment it's still two sheets wide. If we had to print this information, potentially it wouldn't be the end of the world. It would mean stitching together two sets of columns of data with sellotape, and that's potentially not very pretty, but we could do it. OK, let's zoom back into our data and look at some other options. So the next thing we're going to want to do is to control the print area. To do this, I'm going to move to Page Layout. and I'm doing this in preparation of selecting my data. I'm going to select my data. I think I might include this header as well. And I have a, a spare column A here, which I like to see this column when I'm working with Excel but I don't need to print this blank column. So I'm going to start from this header here and move to the bottom of my data. With the information selected, I can now come to my Print Area button and use Set Print Area. If I'm now to zoom out, I can see still my dividing lines, but before the dividing lines or the break lines were reoccurring throughout the rest of the sheet. Now those lines are no longer displayed. There's no danger of us printing any information outside of the print area. OK, so this sounds like progress. Another technique we may need to employ in order to get all of our information onto one sheet is simply to hide or delete some of the information that is not absolutely essential to be printed. So in this circumstance, I still have columns to the left that are outside of my one page document. So one option is for me to simply hide those columns and now I can see that all of my information is in one print area. It is going to be multiple pages long but it is only one page wide. But that's only one option and those columns that I've hidden may be super important to me. I need to keep an eye on them. So let's get them back. Well, let's start and look at some options to really dictate to Excel how we want the information to be printed. Let's say I want to force Excel to print all of this information on one sheet wide. Whatever happens, I don't want it ever to run over multiple sheets wide. I can come up to my Scale to Fit options within the Page Layout tab and select Width One Page. You'll notice that my break line has disappeared and now even though we have the same amount of data there's only one break line and that's either side of my data where the print area is. Let's have a look at what that will look like on our page preview. OK, so it looks like we have a measure of success. All of our information is, albeit very small, but it all fits on one page. This is a particularly useful feature and one that I use very, very regularly. So remember to use the page width set to 1. We also may want to control the height. For some reason, we may decide that we only want to have one page tall and one page wide. Let's see how that would look. OK, that's clearly not feasible. Unless we have a microscope, we're not going to be able to read this spreadsheet. 
So you need to make adjustments to the data within your spreadsheet as well as controlling the print area and the way the print area is displayed. In this situation, it's simply not sensible to have the height set to 1. Let's put it back to automatic to allow Excel to adjust as it needs. There's one other feature that we can access within the page layout view that will enable us to still print all of the information we want on one sheet, but make that font a little bit bigger and a little bit easier to read. Currently we're using the default orientation, which is portrait. That is, as if you're looking at a standard A4 sheet and it is taller than it is wider. But we can change this orientation to landscape, thus meaning that we have a very wide page but a very short height. Let's see how that would look. So this is probably a good option for us. It's got all of the information that we need to see on one sheet. It is multiple pages long, but we're still able to see all of the columns at one time.